Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Today, it's a very fun chat, and I'm joined by none other than a very knowledgeable journalist and almost a veteran of the channel here now, Mia Eriksson. Mia, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm good, despite Sweden's uh, loss of points <laughs> <laughs> against yep. Italy last night in the Nations League. I'm I'm good. I'm That's good. good. Well, a drop a point is something. It's better than no points at all. It was a late revival. Um, for those who are not aware of what we're talking about, it's the Italy game against Sweden, the Nations League one one draw. Quite an interesting it makes the table very interesting. I think the nation league tables are very interesting. But today we're gonna to be talking about the Champions League tables and the draw that we saw not too long ago for things that are gonna kick off very, very soon. Overall reaction at the draw, there's a few extra teams in there that we haven't seen before, a few teams that are out of the draw. We'll break down each table um, as we go through it, but just an overall draw reaction from you when, when you see when you saw them you know, pull out Group A, B, C, and D, and, and so on. Well, I think uh, what, what we see and speak uh, a lot about in the women's game at the moment is for every season to start, for every competition to start, and and whatever we just talk about the women's game uh, yeah. overall is obviously very exciting to see uh, how these teams will stand up against each other. Also because of the fact that, that when we saw the groups uh, in the World Cup, we ob obviously had one thought in our head that, okay, these teams are going to go through uh, easily. And yeah. then that didn't happen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm expecting some shocks uh, in the Champions League as well. Yeah, I hope so. We see some shocks because it writes some great stories. Like you mentioned, the World Cup was a shock after another. Um, looking at Group A here, the first one, we've got Barcelona, Rosengra Rosengard and Benfica, which actually is the exact same group that we saw last year. It was with Bayern. This time, they're joined by another German team, Frankfurt, actually making their debut in the group stages of the Champions League. Um, on the way to the qualifications, they had to knock out Juventus which was quite an exciting, I think, draw. Didn't like how early it happened, but we'll get to that in a moment. Group A, what are the reactions? Obviously, Barcelona, the reigning champions in there, is going to scare anybody. Um, it was funny, we saw the clips of the opposing teams reacting to them being drawn to Barcelona. But Frankfurt in there, I mean, what are your expectations of the team and, and how they will do? Because it's like, They've been in a trajectory preparing to get into the Champions League. Now they're in it, but it's no easy group. I think this is one of the toughish groups that we're we're seeing here. Yeah, I think uh, I think German women's football overall is prom it promises us already that these games will be very well worthy of watching mm. uh, and our time like if we want to choose um, a game to watch I'm pretty sure that the German teams now Bayern and Eintracht will uh, will offer us good football but yeah. what I do think it's very interesting is the fact that Barcelona really <laughs> struggled against Bayern Munich in the group stage mm -hmm. uh, last season so I think in terms of that it will be interesting to have a new team in that group yeah. um, to see what will happen. Uh, in terms of Benfica and, and Rosengård and, and Barcelona, I think it's obviously I kind of uh, realized that the reaction from the FC Rosengård sporting director, Therese Sjögran, was a bit funny uh, yeah. when she saw that, okay, it's Benfica and Barcelona again. But you can look at it from another perspective as well with that is that, okay, but what have these teams learned about each other mm -hmm. um, from last season to this season? Uh, and from a Swedish point of view, uh, I'm very interested to see what FC Rosengård actually learned mm -hmm. from their experience in the Champions League last season. Who do you think would give them the hardest challenge? Because like you mentioned, they faced Benfica, they faced Barcelona, and now they've got a German team in the mix as well. Do you think they'd 
I mean, like you mentioned, you'd be interested to see how much they learned from those um, fixtures last season. But do you think there's a team or style of football that they probably struggle a little, a little bit more than not? I think um, looking at their club season this season, mm-hmm. who, which uh, that that come from a lot of reasons. But yeah. one reason is the fact that they didn't get the vacation. Uh, last season because our season uh, for for those who doesn't know that it ends in two weeks and then the Champions League group stage starts and this time the Champions League group stage will will, um, be in January uh, when most of the other Swedish teams who doesn't play in the uh, Champions League they are off to have vacation Yep. Uh, one month later, uh, at the end of February, at the beginning of March, our season starts with the mm-hmm. Swedish Cup group stage. So yeah. these teams, they don't have any vacation. And I think that will affect Rosengård uh, continuously uh, throughout this season because they won't have a vacation for two years, if you look at it that way. Yeah. With the World Cup and all in the middle, yeah. Yes, so I think in terms of that, and the fact is that they have a coach who is not very well experienced, I think that FC Rosengård will probably struggle even more uh, this season. Um, But obviously, you know, mentally uh, and experience-wise, the the players in the team will uh, have a chance to show uh, mm. what they have learned how to deal with with being in the Champions League and playing against the best yeah I think that was a, a major topic when the qualifications hit so early after the World Cup but specifically you have to talk about the teams in the seasons that have continuously like you mentioned been going on for almost two years now because their season was going on a lot of the players were out to the World Cup and then back to the season going on and then back into yes. the the Champions League which is I think an interesting topic for probably a, a later a later time, but uh, I think that is a, a component that we'd have to take in consideration when we're talking about any Swedish team in here. Not to kind of put you under pressure, but do you think who would be the runner-up in here? Is it Benfica? Is it Frankfurt? Like for me personally, I've quite enjoyed Benfica. I know they lost Chloe Lacasse and that was a huge topic. They've been able to recruit another Canadian of Mimi Aladou. She's been doing fantastic with them. I think Frankfurt impressive momentum they did really really well handling pressure under Juventus do we have a favorite to be a runner-up here or it will it could just be another shock like the many group shocks that we've seen uh this summer I think in terms of having a lot of experience of this competition Benfica would probably be a good shout but I do think that the German mentality um will win uh, this race and uh, just run in as uh, second placed in this group. Mentality versus experience. I think that's always a fun matchup. That could be the buzzword for Group A. Moving on to Group B, we've got Leon, um, Salvia Praha, St. Poulton and Bren, who uh, made it to the Champions League group stages for the first time. Martin Ho, obviously their head coach this season, who was an assistant coach at United, left and now has been working with Bran. I've quite enjoyed the transition that he's had with them. I think they did super, super well against Celtic. Quite a physical team often, a little bit unorthodox with how they played. I mean, how fantastic is it to see another Scandi team in there, specifically Bran? Editing Mary, I'm jumping here for a quick correction. Their draw was actually with Glasgow City and not Celtic. Terrible mistake. Back to Mia. I think it's very interesting also because uh, Brann hasn't had the best uh, club season uh, yeah. domestically. Um, but this is also interesting because of the fact uh, of, of Martin, their head coach, is that he... I, I often think that is like this. You mm. come into a new league as a coach and you are a very good coach, but then it takes time to learn a league in terms of, okay, how do we need to play in the league to win games? Yeah. And if you if you don't know that when you come in, it will take some time to to learn that. Yeah. That that's one thing. The other thing is that Bram 
um, probably doesn't have equally as good players on paper as they had last season. Mm. But then you, when you see them play Glasgow now in the qual- qualification round, um, you could see that Martin Ho, he, he really did know how to beat these teams. Mm. This is how we play mm. uh, when we're going to meet uh, these teams. And the style of play was perfect uh, for yeah. that matchup. So I think that Bran could really be the surprise in this group. And I will hold them high as runners up against Leon uh, after Leon. After Leon, yeah, no, I, I probably have my odds on them too. Like you mentioned, it's very interesting to see how they've been doing in the league. I think they're sitting fourth. I think third, fourth, yes, probably. Yes. So that would that might mean they're gonna miss on Champions League qualification for the season afterwards. So making a statement this season and being able to grab as much experience from the time being now. To you know, whenever is the next qualification would be super super important. Leon, um, I think they had a rough start last season with the injuries that they were dealing with. Just the kind of transition th- from the summer window, they fell short to Arsenal. Um, I believe they had a draw with Juventus. We didn't see the dominant Leon at the group stages. Um, looked like when their their players were coming back in more of a healthy fashion, um, they put on some good good games obviously that was a fun one with Chelsea do you see them struggling at all this time in the group stages um given obviously the different challenges that they have this time compared to the last group stages that they got last season uh no I can't see them struggle now yeah they have probably if we're going to be honest now and and straight on they have uh, the easiest group on paper but with that being said on paper and on the pitch uh two different things but I can't even see them. Like last season, you could I could actually see PSG competing for the league title with mm. them. But in the end, they managed uh, anyway. Uh, but this is and the feeling is that this is Lyon's uh, season domestically with with the transfers they have made and and si- signings, uh, obviously. And then when you look at this draw uh, in in the group stage, it would be a massive uh, failure. Uh, if they didn't end up as number one in this group. I think a clean sweep even. Um, Anything less would be disappointing. Like you mentioned, it's been a great summer for them with either contract um, extension or just making sure that the players that they needed to be to stay healthy are healthy comparison to, to last season, obviously. So I would back you up saying Leon, top it. Brand, hopefully, I, you got to be rooting for the underdogs here to get a runner up. And like you mentioned, that European style football, they might have an edge up a little bit. Uh, for Group C, we've got Bayern, PSG, who we just touched on a little bit, Roma and Ajax. This one, I think, honestly, is a little bit up in the air. Um, we've seen Bayern drop a little, a few points here and there, Roma being dominant as ever. Um, PSG obviously doing the job that they needed to do against United. Do you think this is a, a, a I, personally? I feel like this is one of the tougher one. Group C for me ranks a little bit higher than Group D, and and who could make it? Who? How do you see this one playing out? I think this one is uh, probably the hardest one. Like the uh, no, the most competitive. One, yes, competitive. I would say. Let, let's use that that word instead. Mm. I what I do see is uh, a team. In if we look at Bayern, I I think you can probably see a little bit of what's happening in Arsenal. They're not being effective. <laughs> uh, they don't score goals um, as they probably should. Um, they have some new signings, uh, need to to build relationships on the pitch and also patterns uh, of play. Mm. Um, and I do think that PSG... This is PSG's chance to show in this group Mm -hmm. that they have experience of the competition. Yeah. Like, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. But what I do, what team I do see end up on top here uh, uh, to top this group, that that's Roma. Mm -hmm. I think I think they will make life hard for all of these opponents um, this season, and I think that they are capable uh, of it even though they are a young team in in the competition Mm -hmm. Um, but 
it's a very interesting style of play uh, and they have many good players uh, in their squad. That's usually what I love when I see groups like this, when they have four different teams from four different leagues, all of them doing what they're doing best. Um, with PSG also, sure, they've lost the likes of Ashley Lawrence, for example, but I mean, Katoto's coming back. That's got to be a terrifying thought for a lot of these defensive sides now or defense backlines for either Ajax, Roma or Bayern. How do you feel like Bayern's backline is going to handle PSG's attacking threats? I think, I mean, this is obviously where I'm getting a little bit biased because there's a Swede playing in, in the yeah. Bayern uh, backline. Also, uh, Glodis Vigo's daughter who has played in Sweden, I am very familiar of. I think that obviously Bayern's backline, if we look at the centre backs, they are not the most speedy ones. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this group. And then they will go up against Katoto. They will go up against uh, Ele Evelyn Viennes in Ro Roma. Uh, and Roma has very a very quick uh, style of play. Yeah. Um, and the high they press high as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting. But also the fact is that Bayern Munich is a German team. And German teams are very well known for uh, their good def defending. And I think that's also one thing that you can see. Well, obviously, there are two, two Nordic Europe players in, in Bayern's backline, but they have Georgia Stanway, Zara mm -hmm. Zadrazil, uh, and, and players like that that, that could, could uh, weigh up. To, yeah. to get it, uh, you know, the the physicality of German mm -hmm. German football. Yeah. But I, I do think that this, this group will be the hardest. Um, and I do think that it it pains me to say this because I really want it to to go well for Bayern. But I do yeah. think that they will be the team that will fall short here and end up third. Also, the fact is that I, I think Ajax would probably be a team that it's going to be an easy opponent on paper for the other three teams mm -hmm. to go up against. Uh, I don't think that Ajax is as strong as Twente. Mm. And Twente is out, as we all know. Yeah. Um, but I do think that Roma will top this group, PSG will come second, and Bayern will be the team, <laughs> the top team that will Fall short. Yeah, I I love how ballsy that is because it's it's true. I think Roma have been so direct, and I'm so glad you highlighted Evelyn Viennes because obviously you're you're quite familiar with her. She spent some time in Sweden before going. Sadly, to I'm familiar with her. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, you could say. <laughs> Um, you know, she spent some time in Sweden and when Roma lost Roman Hawk, it was like who is going to be that big striker again to come in and give us that confidence of goals up top and I think Evelyn Viennes has gone and slotted in so quickly and adjusted so well with them and like you mentioned she's very physical her hold-up play I think is superb and showing to be such that with Roma um, so for everybody listening Evelyn Viennes you might want to keep your eyes on her she's a Canadian so probably goes under the radar when it comes to, to the media um, but I think what we will see in this group is a lot of forward excellence. Um, PSG, um, hopefully Harder would be back fit and healthy for Bayern to show some of the last few games. I think that we needed, uh, that was a big blow for Bayern as well, that they bring in an experienced player like Harder that unfortunately picks up an injury as early as that. But good, good guesses, good shouts for Group C. That's, I feel like, is the one to put your money on and definitely keep watching Group D, we've got Chelsea. Can I just add something? Yeah, of course. Uh, to the Group C and Evelyn Vian, because this is actually one of my favorite signings um, for for this European season when it started, yeah. because of the fact that Evelyn Vian could probably, I'm pretty sure that she had interests from top clubs like all through Europe, not just Roma. Yeah. But I do think that her choice to play for Roma. That's probably one of the most perfect matches, uh, matchups uh, mm -hmm. between a player and a club because of the fact that is that 
Roma is uh, the Italian league champion, mm -hmm. like, but she will get playing time, and she probably wouldn't have gotten as much playing time if she went to Chelsea or Arsenal, and and you, if we talk England, yeah. not even maybe, and I'm not sure the German style of play would fit her perfectly mm -hmm. uh, but this is a, a perfect matchup and I'm very excited to see how she develops in Italy. Agreed I think it was one of the more spot-on drilled for when it comes to a player perspective and she's been very vocal about it with with the Canadian media of how much she's been able to develop and get that consistency of minutes in Europe um, with Roma because like you said moving from any team to more I guess of a step up Minutes are always a bit of a worry, but when you're scoring or contributing, I think her off-ball movement, again, is goes a little bit under the radar. So for Viennes, I'm stoked to see her do what she's doing. Um, and I think I, I'm excited for her to stir th some things up in, in the Champions League here. Group T, uh, we've got Chelsea, Real Madrid. Uh, both of them face each other in the group stages last season. And then Hacken and Paris FC. Paris FC going in with... You could say a lot of a lot of praise around them, and rightfully so, knocking out Arsenal um, and Wolfsburg. And what I've liked from them is they come at you. They are not so afraid to go at these big teams. And I actually probably see them giving Chelsea a bit of trouble if they do have that approach, because I think if we're talking about the WSL, a lot of teams go to Chelsea a little bit afraid, a little bit timid. And you want a team to go at it to 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 not be to not hold back so much. Obviously, do it in a smart and efficient way. The Paris FC gives me that style of we're going at you. How do you see Paris FC hopefully continuing what they're continuing to do in this group, given that there's Hacken and, and Real Madrid and Chelsea? What I do think is that the Paris FC is a team that that knows what they are good at, and they use what they are good at on the pitch to win games. Uh, they don't use tactics uh, or um, a style of play that they can't like manage. Uh, so considering that they have uh, beaten Arsenal and the likes of Wolfsburg now over two legs, Mm. Uh, that that says something and they are going into this group stage with a lot of confidence but I do think mm -hmm. that Paris FC have done like the major things already yeah. Yeah. Uh, because this is uh, so I do think that anything uh, than Chelsea topping this group would be a massive failure for Emma Hayes and Chelsea Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first thing I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, I don't think Real Madrid has managed to... They don't have enough identity yet of yeah. themselves to become number one of this group. Uh, but they will come in uh, as number number two. Uh, if they don't screw this this one up badly, yeah. Um, yes, um, because this is also a thing that Real Madrid will come to Sweden to play in in November. I think they will play. Yeah, uh, and it's very cold here. Uh, it's artificial artificial grass, and it's very cold. And I'm hoping uh, for for that to to affect them. Because yeah. um, I think that Beko Hecken, they have, if they get Ellen Rubenson back at the central parts of the midfield, mm -hmm. uh, I think she will be a massive contributor to, to Hecken because they have brave players up front. Also, a very young team. You, Clarissa you have... Larissa, maybe coming back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if she comes back, that would be awesome as well. But I mean, going through the qualification now against Twente, mm. they had a 16-year-old uh, that scored yeah. um, across both legs. And she has been a very important player for them in the end race of the Dalmal Svenskan as well. Mm. So I do think that in terms of that, Hecken is the team that... And I, I obviously think that with Paris FC as well, but because Paris FC and Beko Hecken, they have 
probably so many young players that will play yeah. get a chance to play in the Champions League. And this yeah. is what what I was talking about with the fact that I really do like that for the Swedish league and the teams from Sweden to show the rest of the world uh, and um, girls in Sweden mm -hmm. um, and abroad that if you come to Sweden, you get to play top football in the Champions League uh, and it's possible to do it here, um, which is one of the reasons I'm I'm very happy that both teams that could make it through the group stage now did it and they managed that. Um, so and this is also where I'm see see Paris FC. They also show uh, France um, and the rest of Europe, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that uh, they're they're good enough to be there and they deserve to be there. They deserve to be there, and every team, every team that's made it in there, um, I think is huge for their own program, and I think financially too. Like, if we go back to Rosengard a little bit, them hosting Barcelona or them going over to Barcelona, that's a huge financial. You know, you're selling a lot of tickets. There's a lot of eyes that are tuning in. There is probably folks that haven't maybe gone out to your games are going to be a little bit more interested now. So I know there was a huge discourse beforehand when we saw a few teams get knocked out big teams, the likes of Juventus, Arsenal, and obviously last year's finalists, Wolfsburg, there was a topic, I guess, of either an expansion or reformatting. Um, we'll get to the reformatting in a second, but how fantastic is it to, to see teams like this get an opportunity for one, to get experience for their youngsters, to get experience for the club in general? Um, and also, I think financially, Champions League football brings in money. We talk growth. It can't just be in the WSL or England. It has to be across the world so from a swedish perspective or even more of like a scandinavian perspective because now bran is in how crucial is that when you see those teams make it to the group stages yeah we, we can even go back to the first round of quali qualification that we held uh, this mini tournament with arsenal fc krivbas from ukraine mm -hmm. and paris fc uh, in sweden and we had that in linköping the game that Lin Shopping played against Arsenal, we had a sold out arena. Like 8,000 people in the stands. Um, and there were people who came uh, within Sweden uh, to see Arsenal. And this is where you, as a club like Lin Shopping, we had to take advantage of that. Yeah. So, because we could create an event and an experience for people in Sweden who support Arsenal, who rarely go, go to London to see Arsenal, because we had the opportunity to create the event for them to mm -hmm. be able to watch their idols and their favorite team. And, and I think we did that pretty good. It was a very, very, like, how do you say it? But it was a nice experience to, yeah. to walk around uh, in the stadium that day. And this is where uh, other teams now, uh, like you mentioned, teams like SK Brann, yeah. who plays in Bergen uh, in Norway. And then you have FC Rosengård now and Beko Hecken. The, I hope they that they will grab the opportunity to do what we saw was possible in Linköping. Yeah. You have to like uh, create relationships with... The, we, we created a relationship with Arsenal Sweden supporter group. We created uh, a relationship to Arsenal English <laughs> supporters uh, yeah. before the game to tell them that come here to enjoy your team play. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where I see it's very important for especially the Scandinavian teams and the smaller teams across Europe to, to give people an experience that they can't take for granted. Agreed. And I, and I love how you mentioned that as an example for the rest of the teams to kind of look at that model and see what happened there and try to use that for their own upcoming games, either home games or even traveling games. Um, going back a little bit to the formatting, I think it's it's a conversation that there's probably no right or wrong answer. Is it an expansion problem here or is it a qualifications uh, like ranking problem that we see here? Like for me personally, I don't have an issue and this might not be very popular, but I don't have an issue with United getting knocked out before the group stages when they face PSG. Like to me, that's not so much of a huge issue. I would have an issue when Juventus and Frankfurt, for example, who I, Juventus is a team that has, 
again, a young team in the competition, but it's done pretty well. Um, and I think they had a very tough group last season with Arsenal and, and Leon in the mix. That, for me, when you're having those big matchups early on, maybe strips away from that opportunity for those teams. But I don't have an issue with seeing United and PSG do it right before the Champions League group stages when United is a team who's never even had an experience in the Champions League. So is it a, a league path issue? Is it a champion path issue? Is it an expansion? Like Again, there's no right or wrong answer, but how do you think we could best handle the current situation? I think uh, it's a development issue. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that, because what we see is there's not... We talk a lot about equality between men and women, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what we see is inequality between leagues and teams and clubs within a league. We see mm -hmm. uh, it's not equal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not equal to look at Chelsea and to look at Bristol City. So that that's one problem. And then there's a lot of development going on real quick. We talk a lot about uh, the women's game and there it's developing yeah uh, and when a thing <laughs> or a product develop quick this is where we end up you uh, we're not up to up to date like okay yeah. how are we going to format things how are we going to do things okay we do this okay but next year eh, we can't decide that we're going to do this for five years because the development is so quick that mm -hmm. next year we are behind Mm. with the way we we set things up and so i think for me this is a way to just look at uh, what we have seen happening within the champions league qualifiers mm -hmm. um there's so many things surrounding what we speak about also mm -hmm. that will need to be taken into considerations like uh, the world cup has been played um there was an expansion of the world cup yeah. um caused us a few surprises and shocks but mm -hmm. it was a nice entertainment and the champions league is also a nice entertainment and the qualifications um uh, needs also needs to be entertaining to people to go watch because yep. and that what was happening in lin shopping it was a great event uh, yeah. For the people in Linköping, for people in Sweden who supported Arsenal, because we gave them a chance to come and see the best players in the world. Now, unfortunately, they they are out. But and I and I don't think that that was UEFA's plan to mm -hmm. have two <laughs> Swedish teams play in the group stage in the middle of the winter. Uh, but then you have Juventus uh, knocked out and Wolfsburg and and you know. Yeah. But I think it's it's more of a development issue. I think that's a very important conversation to talk about you know we're seeing teams and leagues develop but maybe competitions are just catching up because their rate is just so high to catch up with regardless i think it's going to be very important to see how if any changes happen to next season possibly how the season is going to play out the groups like we just gone through are going to promise us a lot of goals a lot of action probably some shocks because that's what we got to see in the world cup mia i'm afraid we're slightly short on time here but i'm sure you're going to be covering plenty of this a lot of these candy teams you're probably got everybody covered more than anybody else. How can folks keep updated with you and keep going on with your content? Are we saying X these days? But I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> formerly Twitter. Uh, exactly. Uh, on X, formerly Twitter, uh, <laughs> it's Mia underscore Eriksson. Uh, and on Instagram, actually, because I'm going to do a lot of photographing during the Champions Pictures, League yeah. now. Uh, it's uh, m erikson dot photo. Perfect. I'll be leaving both of them down below. And Mia definitely gets us a lot of fantastic shots that you will most definitely be wanting to just look at, enjoy because it captures a great moment, regardless of what it is that Mia's putting up. Mia, thank you so much for joining me today, and hopefully we'll be talking about some of these teams when they qualify and and seeing how our predictions went. Appreciate you joining me today. Yeah, we need to have a follow-up talk to see if we were right. <laughs> Let's <Okay>. see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>